Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to speak about the Euro crisis and I want to present you my latest book, The Euro Trap, which came out this summer with Oxford University Press. The Euro was supposed to be a peace project for Europe, but the reality is not quite living to these expectations. These were pictures we have seen during the crisis, not now, it's a few years ago, but ugly pictures which I hope not to see again. The book tries to give an overview of the Euro experiment, the economic side, but also the political aspects of the Euro. When we introduced the Euro, we thought it would give a growth boost to Europe. Actually, at the Lisbon Agenda in 2000, there was the hope expressed that Europe will be the most competitive and dynamic knowledge-based economy in the world by 2010. Was this expectation justified? What did happen? Here you see some regions in the world, the growth from the year 2000 onward, China, Sub-Saharan Africa, Asian countries, Middle East and North Africa, world, uh, the emerging and developing European countries, not in the EU, Latin America, South Africa, United States, and here you have the EU countries and the Euro countries. And you see the Euro area is the laggard of the world, not the most dynamic region of the world. Something went wrong. The unemployment situation also is uh, everything else but satisfactory. Germany is here. G Germany had its own Euro crisis uh, 10 years ago. This has been overcome and the rate of unemployment is low. But uh, look at other countries. France, has now twice as much unemployment as Germany, while 10 years ago uh, it was much better off. Here we have Ireland. This is Italy, increasing unemployment until recently. Portugal, things may be improving, uh, but the level is high. And here Spain and Greece in the order of 25% rate of unemployment. This is quite a problematic development. And if you look at youth unemployment, the figures are even worse. Uh, Germany has less than 10%, but here France has uh, about 25% youth unemployment. Unemployment, as always, means unemployment of those who are available for the labor market. Of course, uh, both in the numerator and denominator, uh, the uh, uh, students are not included. Here is Ireland, here, here is Italy, 43, 44% rate of youth unemployment. And here we have Greece, 50%, and Spain, even 55% uh, rate of youth unemployment. I would say this is quite a catastrophe, and the question is how long Europe can afford such a situation. If we don't solve this problem, then radical political parties may take over, which uh, will lead Europe into unknown territory. Let's look at the industrial production. The point here is the beginning of 2008. You see the great recession of the world. Uh, the advanced economies of the world all declined and they have not yet succeeded in reaching their pre crisis level. The, the emerging countries, on the other hand, are growing and for them it is only a little kink in this curve. What about the European countries? For comparison, Germany, Germany just managed to reach the pre-crisis level of industrial production. Here are others. That's Portugal, a decline of 10%. This is France, about 18%, and this is Italy. Italy has a triple-dip recession. 
the ball falls down in until the spring 2009, then there is a period of upswing until the winter 2010-2011, then it falls down again to the same level, then there is a little upswing in the last year, there was new hope that the crisis would be overcome, but this year is again a, a year of recession. So it's clearly a triple dip recession. This is Spain, the situation is even worse because in Spain we do see a double dip depression. The ball is falling down a slope because the second dip is even deeper than the first one. And now we have to see what uh, this winter brings. I'm afraid it is possible that uh, there could also be a triple dip for Spain. We will have to wait for the further development. And here is Greece. The situation is very similar. The two countries are in many respects much more similar than the public opinion and the newspapers see it. There is our, however, one exception, and this is Ireland. Ireland is the great performer. Uh, they managed, first of all, for a while until last year to keep their pre-crisis level of industrial output. And since last year, the Irish had an increase of about 20% in industrial production, which is enormous, an enormous success. I will come back to why this was the case. What we are doing in Europe is we are diagnosing a lack of aggregate demand and we are carrying out Keynesian demand management policies and loose monetary policy. We are pouring money at these economies and allow them to borrow more if the crisis is severe to overcome the lack of demand. And I will try to convince you that this is a wrong diagnosis and a wrong therapy. We don't have an aggregate demand problem of the Keynesian kind. We rather have structural problems in Europe which require a completely different approach. Of course, with pouring money at these economies, you can uh, alleviate the pain, but uh, you may not cure the disease. These are my themes, the bursting bubble, the competitiveness problem, the rescue operations, and then uh, policy proposals.